I've titled this Lifestyle of Faith. A Lifestyle of Faith. Last week we looked at a lifestyle of love and giving. And we read from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And it says that, you know, if, even though I have the faith that can move mountains and I, have, I don't have love, it profits me nothing. And we declare that we will walk in love and we will live a lifestyle of giving and we will have profit therein in Jesus' name. But let's look closely at the issue of faith, a lifestyle of faith, to have a mountain-moving faith. How many people want to be there? Amen. And it's yours in Jesus' name. Amen. Because it's in the Word, and it's one of the privileges that the Lord has given to us. Walking with God does not mean that we wake up and we have on our doorstep the things that we want, the things we require, but oftentimes, it requires a walk with him. It requires a consistency. It requires knowing him. It requires, um, you know, knowing God intimately, growing, growing in him and experiencing him. Because someone might be there and say, look, I've believed God for a particular thing. And I haven't seen it. This is five years running now or two years, or two months, and I thought it would just appear overnight. But there are certain things that you've asked God for that you saw literally overnight. But there are certain things that you have to, you know, just, it has to take just walking in God. It has to take, you know, time and progress. And I want to let us know that the earlier we um, get comfortable in that, the better. The earlier we focus on the process, not just the end result, the better. The earlier we enjoy where we are on the way to where we are going, hello, the better. In the city where we live, at least where I live, for the sake of those watching by TV and by internet, you know, we're global now. So, the city called Lagos, where I live, there's often a lot of traffic. And I think that the earlier you factor in <laughs> the traffic on the way you're go to where you're going, the better for you. But you know you will get to your destination. But it's a matter of when. And if you know you get to your destination and you set out on time, then you think about what can I do during the time? What can I do during the traffic, uh, the time that the traffic will take up and all that? And you know you can really maximize your life and end up even happier when you get to your destination than the person that didn't go through any traffic. Because during that time, you've read the word, you've confessed the word, you've listened to messages, you've listened to music, you've, you've made telephone calls, uh, you've, you've done your work on the internet, on your iPad or whatever, during the two hours traffic. Hello. You've done so many things. Some of us even do our makeup during traffic. <laughs> Lord have mercy. You've been able to catch up on a lot of work. But if you're just fixing your mind on this traffic, this traffic, this traffic, why is there always traffic? Wake up. There will be traffic if you live in a city like mine. So, rather than complaining your way through <laughs> and you get to the destination, but you are drained because you have not built up your faith. I use every opportunity to get the word of God in me. Even when I'm on the treadmill on some mornings, God help me. <laughs> I have my confession, I have the word of God right in front of me. I must get the word in at every opportunity. So some people think that when you are doing exercises, you're wasting time. You know, because it says bodily exercise profits little. And the little that it profits, it will show. <laughs> but spirituality is profitable unto what? All things. So we can get the spirituality. We have to be very tenacious about walking in faith. In the life that we're living right now, amen. We have to live by faith. The Bible is full of stories of men and women who lived and achieved by faith. You want to talk about Abraham, Moses, um, even the mother of Moses. She put him by the river Nile by faith. Hello? She didn't want him to die, although he could also die there. But by faith, she put him there. You are sitting on that chair you are sitting on by faith. Do you know that? You're, you're living in this country by faith. You wake up each morning and day to day. But it's like, maybe it's an unconscious faith. I'm sure most of us, didn't, you did, before you sat down, you didn't, try, you didn't shake the chair and to be sure that it's strong enough to keep you, but you just sat on it. 
And so that is faith. But we need to be deliberate about faith because if you can have faith for the chair you're sitting on, then you should be able to have faith for you know, any other thing and every other thing. So your story, too, is in the making. Your story is in the making. Amen. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 6, let's read Philippians chapter 6. Oh, sorry, Philippians chapter 4, we'll read verses 6 and 7. God wants us to switch to a lifestyle of faith and to depart from a lifestyle of what? Worrying. Someone said worry is like a rocking chair. You're moving, but you're not moving, you're not going anywhere. You're going back and forth. There's activity, but guess what? You're still on the same spot. But I see you moving, moving forward. Amen. I see you moving forward. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. God is a good God. Switch to a lifestyle of faith. Philippians chapter 6. Sorry for, why am I in a hurry? Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto who? God. Unto God. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. He says, don't worry about anything. That's it. I didn't say it. I didn't write the word. It's right there in God's word. He says, be anxious for what? Nothing. Did he say some things? He says, nothing. But many times we argue in our minds, and someone is arguing in his mind or in her mind right now, thinking, oh, well, yeah, you don't know what I'm going through. But he says, nothing. Nothing. He said, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. That is, when we pray, we should walk in faith. Ask him what you want, give thanks, you know, for it, and leave it in his hands. Let your request be made known unto God. If it's made known unto God, then you should trust that he's able to keep you. You should trust that he's able to handle it. Men may have failed us, people may have failed us, but God will not fail us. Because he's a good God and he's a great God and he knows what he's doing. And the first, first of all, the reward that we get for doing that, the first thing we are promised and we are guaranteed is what? The peace of God. First of all. So it's exciting that before you even see the answer to what you're praying for, what you've asked for, he says, first of all, if you've done it the right way, if you've truly handed it over to him, if you've truly talked to him and left it with him, he says, one, you will experience the peace of God that passes all understanding. The issue might still be the same. It may not have changed. But what will have changed is that your heart will be filled with peace. Hallelujah. And that itself will attract the miracle. That itself will attract the working of angels. That itself will put the devil to shame. Because the devil and his agents will be like, ah, this situation has not changed, but why is he happy? Why is she looking so peaceful and glad when the situation has not changed? So that drains them of their power and their energy and they are frustrated. You see? And the angels of God can move on the scene. Amen. And God himself is excited because now he says, you are walking with me. Amen. You're walking with me. You've not physically seen the answer, but you've received my peace, and you're, you're trusting me that I am on your case. Amen. Amen. How many people know that God is on their case? And if God is on your case, then you both don't need to be awake. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says he gives his beloved sleep. So i like to challenge us. Give up your cares. Give it up to him. Hallelujah. Not to do so is a sign of pride. I'm sorry, I know that's below the belt for some people. But it is a sign of pride. And, I mean, most of us will say, well, I don't have pride, I'm not, because I don't have a proud look, and I know I'm humble and all that. But do you trust God with your life? Are you able to live in his hands? what you've committed to him? Or are you struggling, you know, continually with God? This is something that we need to look at, you know, closely. 
not to give up our cares is a sign of a lack of trust in God. So we must trust him. And someone says, but how do I get to that point? The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hearing by the word of God, that's how you build up your faith. You don't just get there overnight. How do you trust someone that you don't know? So the challenge is still to get to know God, to know him through his word, to read life stories, except the stories in the Bible are fables. And the Bible says we have not followed cunningly devised fables. We believe in the word of God. Amen. We believe that those stories were true. We believe that the Red Sea did part into two. That is not a fairy, fairy tale. We believe that Abraham, Sarah, even when Sarah was past, you know, menopause, when she was in menopause, that they still had the child, Isaac. We believe that those things were not concocted. We believe that they really happened. We believe that Jesus came to the earth and died and he rose up from the dead. His body was not stolen away from the grave. If you don't believe that, then you're going to have a problem with faith. So we have to go back to the foundation. Who do you believe? So if our faith is weak, and times have been there too, when it's like, Lord, help my unbelief, help me. And that means that I have to dive for God's word. I have to read more of God's word, amen, amen. and less of the papers. Because <laughs> after a while, you begin to build your life around the news. <laughs> Those news become, begin to become more real <laughs> than what is in God's word. So we have to balance it. So you die for God's word and you are encouraged in God's word. You are encouraged by the story of Noah. You are encouraged by the story of Peter in Acts chapter 10. We should have read that just a few days ago if you are following the Bible reading that we're having in this time. Just two chapters a day. And... Peter slept off in the afternoon and he had a, you know, a vision and he saw unclean animals, animals that had been said in God's word, of course, in the Old Testament, that were unclean and those animals were in a, you know, lower just before him in a cloth and an angel said to him, arise, or he heard a voice and said, kill and eat or something. And Peter was like, ah, no, Lord, no. So he knew it was God's voice. He said, ah, no. What you have, which you have already said, we should not eat those things. <laughs> and the Lord said, what I've called clean, don't call unclean. You know what God was trying to do? He was trying to deal with his religiosity. <laughs> he said, I'm a sovereign God. And since you know it's my voice, notice that he didn't say, get behind me, Satan. So he knew it was the voice of God. And God was trying to, you see, the work of faith is exciting. If it's not been exciting for you, I want to challenge you to see it as an exciting thing. Don't complain that, eh, I've just been trusting God for this, uh, and, then, uh, God, and then now I have to trust God for this again, and when will we get over it? Till Jesus comes, or till you go and be with him. There will be, and there should always be something that you're believing for, even if it's not personal. Amen. How many people are believing God for the great country called Nigeria? <laughs> Hallelujah. So we need lots of faith. Amen. So even if you've gone beyond the personal, believing God for your finances or whatever, but then believe God for other people. <laughs> believe God for the poor. Believe God to, you know, lay hands on people and they will recover. Believe God to have enough money and wealth to be able to feed people and create a place for the homeless. Amen. Amen. So we will always, always live by faith. And I tell you, it is exciting. It's exciting. So Jesus, God was trying to deal with Peter's religious mindset. Peter, the great apostle that walked with Jesus for three and a half years. Who knew Jesus more than Peter when Jesus was on the earth? He would put his head on Jesus, but I mean, he was that close and that free. And he said, no, Lord. <laughs> and when he was convinced that it was God, you know, after all the arguing and everything, he agreed. And God used that because he was going to tell him to go to the house of a man called Cornelius, who was a Gentile. And God was trying to say that if I've cleansed him, he's cleansed. So go and pray with him. And then he had the courage and the faith to do that. Now, you must come to the point where you are able to trust God and believe God and obey unconventional instructions. That's it. <laughs> unconventional instructions. 
And my husband and I, we've been here several times. Things that we know will make us look weird. Hello? And in this season, I know I'm about to take another weird step. Another thing that people are going to be like, especially people who are close to you. No, that doesn't be. But if you've heard God and you have a con- you're convinced on your inside, you go ahead and do it. And then time will tell to bring the result. Imagine how Noah must have felt for so many years, just looking like a fool, because it had never rained, and he was saying that it was going to rain to the point where there will be a great flood. But he knew what he had heard. So are you in that place, trying to hear from God, trying to know what the next step is, or you're believing God for something, but God has supplied the answer, and it's in an instruction, but you are not obeying that instruction, because it's like, what will people say? Because it's like, Lord, this, no, people are going to think I'm crazy. Do you want to please God or you want to please man? Because Hebrews 11 says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. That he's a rewarder of them that seek him. He's a rewarder of those that believe him. So, walking in faith alone attracts God's pleasure. Living a lifestyle of faith, choosing to believe him, is not just uh, the act of, oh yes, uh, name it and claim it, I believe for this, you know, and all that. The act itself, the process itself gives God joy. Amen. Because every now and then, God will hear your voice. Every now and then, God knows that you are, you, you're, you've engaged him. And you know that when you've gotten that miracle, <laughs> he knows that oftentimes we can take off again and be like, okay, God, yes, you are there. So there must be something again. In front of us, because it keeps us hooked on God. Amen. It keeps us thinking about Him. It keeps us thanking Him. It keeps us walking with Him. God Himself is the author and finisher of faith. God Himself had faith in Jesus that He will keep to the plan. <laughs> what if you just change His mind halfway? You know, say, Lord, this is hard. This is hard. He was praying, and it was time to go to the cross. What if He? you know, just sidetrack the whole plan somewhere along the line. But God had faith in him, and oftentimes, too, God has faith in us. He had faith in Job. That's why he was bragging about him to, the, to, to Satan. We've seen my servant Job. He's upright. He loves me. He serves me. And then that got him into trouble because Satan said it was just because of all the beautiful things that you surrounded him with. Let's remove those things and see if he will still serve you. And God had to agree because if not, it won't be a fair play. So Job was just an experiment between God and the, and the enemy. <laughs> Sorry, you might be an experiment right now. <laughs> it's tough, but that's the truth. Is God bragging on you? Can God brag on you? You know, last week we mentioned Abraham, that God was touched. And it was a test, but God wanted to see, you know. And he said, yes, I know Abraham. Amen. And we must come to that point where God is really, you know, um, yes, where he's really proud of us and he knows that, you know, you've been, you've been walking with him. You've been, been walking with God for some years. God too expects certain things, you know, that, uh-uh. you've been, you've been uh, was I not the one that helped you when you had nothing? You know, just think about, when you think about the things God has brought you through, then you have faith for the next project. That project may even just be the birth of a child or the raising of a child. It might just be the school fees. Hello? God, you helped. Who helped you to raise that child through primary? He will help you for the secondary and university. Some people are already worrying about university and their child is in primary school. I was in the salon one day and the lady was saying, ah, all these Christian schools, uh, mentioning some names. Why should it be so, so expensive? I said, that school you are mentioning is highly subsidized. You don't even know. Ah, what will some of us do now? When I, was, I said, how old is your child again? Your children? Four and two. I said, please. <laughs> Please, I don't want to hear anything. Just do my hair. She's thinking already about your vest because she's looking at the fees now. So she's projecting that uh, in some 14 years' time, when the child reaches, how will she do it? I just say, Kai. And if you're in that mode, that means you're going to worry for the next 14 years. <laughs> I just told her, I said, don't even bother. Enjoy where you are right now. Primary, and you're still in this. Just enjoy now. Because so many things will change before then in your favor. The country will change. If the country does not change, your own finances will change. You know, oftentimes, my husband and I, there were things we couldn't, you know, when at the certain level you can't afford something, maybe like a car. And then a few years down the line, 
the thing, that thing is now much more expensive. And you just afford it with ease. Cheaply, you just walk in it. <laughs> Cheaply, because your time has come. So just face your work, and your faith, faith is to believe. He said, what is the work we are supposed to do? Jesus said, the work is to believe on him that sent me. That is the work. Is the work of, our work is believing. Because when we believe, when we have a lifestyle of believing and cultivating that relationship, some things will be easy for us. And that is why David, could say, when he was faced with Goliath, he went to Goliath. Goliath didn't come to him. He said, I'm going to take this one on. He said, the bear, when I was in the field, tending my father's sheep, a bear came. Ah, I tore it, you know. He had to protect the sheep. So he had the faith and the courage to do that. A lion came another time. Ah, he said, I, I dealt with it to protect the sheep. Now this Goliath, I will deal with you. So he, his, faith kept, uh, his kept, faith kept getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Hallelujah. I'm not afraid of any challenge before me because, you see, if God used... Us, well, all of us here, amen? Because I can't claim, we can't claim anything. But we heard the God, word of God. My husband heard the word of God and said, okay, we start a church. Da, 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 the name will be Daystar and all that. And look at where we are now. There were, we didn't have the money for it. Hello? We didn't have, and so many things like that, that when we cast our mind back, I said, what project ever did we have all the whole amount of money before we started? journey of faith. And I tell you, it's exciting because if you don't step into some things, you won't even know some things. You'll just be on a very low level of living. You'll be on a very low level of living. I'm telling you truth this morning that we've walked in. I tell you, I'm not faking it. It is exciting. You know why it's exciting? Because sometimes I even want to see, God, if you are the one sending me on this particular project, now let's see how it's going to turn out. And another key I want to leave with you for, you know, take my seat, is if you are not afraid to fail, then you will enjoy the journey of faith. I'm telling you, if you are not afraid to fail, honestly, if you are not afraid to be sincerely wrong, you see, it's still better than doing nothing at all. Maybe you've seen a good school you like for your child. I mean, this is about finances and this is about family, okay? So I'm marrying the two. And you desire that school and you pray about it. God delights in the prosperity of his servants. That's just the truth. And you know you've sown seeds. And you know that you're not worshipping money. And you know you love God. And you, you desire this good thing for your child. Don't look at you. Look at the website of the school or whatever you've been to. Don't think, uh, for people like us, let's look at what's in the account. No. Take that step of faith. I'm not saying run into debt. Oh. So now come on. But... If you're convinced, you can take the step of faith, yeah, with this behind your mind. Because I'm just telling you practically how I've done it, certain things. If I'm convinced, it's God, I feel my faith is strong, you know, for it, but I go for it. And I tell myself up front. Now, if it doesn't work, then I pull out of it. I am not ashamed to say, I, the Lord, I'm sorry. Does anybody know that joke? I don't want to go there because I don't have time. <laughs> there was a joke about someone that gave a prophecy. That prophecy was fake. <laughs> and he said, oh, I, the Lord, you know, uh, as I was with, uh, who was it? I think he said Moses, and he wanted to say Abraham or something. As I asked uh, Moses to sacrifice his son that I was with him, so will I be with you. Just stuff like that. Of course, people listening already know that. Ah, it wasn't Moses. I think maybe someone corrected him. He said, Abraham, he said, oh, yes, I, the Lord, I'm sorry. <laughs> It's not the Lord that was sorry, it's you. <laughs> you get what he's trying to say? What he's trying to say, God spoke to him the first time, but it was God that made a mistake in his speech. <laughs> ah, the things we really arrogate to God are the things we arrogate to the devil. Sometimes it's just our mind. Sometimes it's just our... So really, to be able to say, look, I'm retracing my steps. I remember when I was starting the Human Foundation, this shelter for ladies, reaching out to prostitutes and all that, created a home for them. I've not seen anybody done it before. And of course, there were times I felt like, ah, what if this doesn't work out? We ran it for about a year. The girls were very difficult and all that. It's much, much easier now. And the lady that worked with me then, I said, should we close this down? She said, no, no, no. She believes God. There's so many signs to show that God is with us. You know? 
But I thought in my mind truly that if I wasn't meant to do it, if it was not meant, if it was not time, I'll close it down. And I thought in my mind that people might say, oh, okay, you see, who sent her? And I thought in my mind, the answer I would give them, I'd say, which one did you start? <laughs> At least for one year that we did the project, it was good while it lasted. We still saved some people. Amen. And I'll close it down and go back and look for something else. If you're not, you see, sometimes what we're afraid to face is that we're afraid of people. What would they say? Eh, who sent her? She tried it, it didn't work. And you see, when you're in that mode, you won't live a lifestyle of faith. Because you can never tell if it works. And if it works, you become someone you've never been before. You become someone because you don't even know. That's why the Bible says, air has not seen, you know, eye has not seen, air has not had the things God has reserved for them that love him and that walk in faith. So many things he's prepared for his children, but oftentimes we're frozen by fear. We're stuck in fear because we're afraid of people. We're afraid of men. We're afraid of so many things. We're afraid of it not working out. Fear, 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 fear. Please, let's step out in faith. At least when Jesus was walking on water, Peter said, if it's you, tell me to come. And he stepped out and he was walking on water. As long as he was focusing on Lord, he was walking on. The moment he looked at himself, he said, ah, me. Then he began to sink. And thank God that he didn't drown. Because in the drowning, he called on Jesus and Jesus pulled him out. Hello. So that's the worst. Amen. Oh, Lord, I'm sorry. You didn't send me on this big step of faith or whatever. And then the Lord will pull you out and set you on the right path. It is well in Jesus' name. Amen. I've not even gone through half of my notes, but I want to trust God. But Father, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for opportunities to know you more. To walk with you, Father. Well, we are trusting God for finances, trusting God for certain miracles. Father, it's been documented. Our lives have been seen and read of men. People that walked in faith, the woman with the issue of blood, she got her miracle. And now it's, it's been documented and we can read that and our faith is strengthened. Help us, Lord, so that our own lifestyle will strengthen other people. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray, Lord, for everyone under the sound of my voice. Now, your issue may, might be finances, it might be children, it might be a sickness, whatever it is. I pray that there will be such a release of faith upon you to walk with God and to receive your miracles. To receive your miracles. Lord, let the miracles begin and let the glory be yours. In Jesus' name. Amen. Make yours a world of possibilities. Come to Daystar Christian Center this Sunday at Plot A3C Ikosi Road, Oregon, Lagos, Nigeria. Join any of our four services at 7 a.m., 8.45 a.m., 10.30 a.m., and 12.15 p.m. And experience possibilities without limits. Day Star, raising role models.